Okay, let's do a nice example. Sample problem 2.5. Uh, it says calculate the magnitude of the moment about the base point o of the 600 Newton force in five different ways. Five different ways. So here we have the structure and we have a 600 Newton force applied at 40 degrees there. Okay, and the, the height is 4 meters and this distance there is 2 meters. Okay, I'm going to just in this video do the first four if, if it doesn't take too long and then I will do number five in a separate video because number five is on using the cross product. Okay, and I feel that needs quite a bit of uh, attention. Alright, so the first one, the moment arm, okay well the first way we do it is this way. We have the 600 Newton force, right? That's the line of action, and we want the moment arm there, D. Okay? And how do we calculate D? As you can see, it's not always so straightforward to use the scalar approach, right, to calculate this D. Although it is possible, it's not, it's not so straightforward. So what is this length of D? It's equal to D cos 40, so there is, uh, sorry, it's equal to 4 cos 40, that's 4, and that distance there is cos of 40, but now we still need that distance there, and it is, that distance is 2 sine 40, how do we get that? You see, now you need to really know your, your geometry and your trigonometry, okay? So there's 2, there's your angle 40, so if you make a right angled triangle there, then 2 sine 40 gives you that length there, which is that length. So we're going to have 4, that's 4 cos 40, plus that length there, which is based on that triangle, which is 2 sine 40. 4.35, that gives you that moment on D, multiplied by 600, and as you can see, it's giving us a clockwise moment, although all it's asking for is the magnitude of the moment, it's asking just for the magnitude, so 600 times 435. If you had chosen clockwise, then this would give you a, a positive moment, because it's going clockwise, and if you've chosen anti-clockwise as positive, this would give you a negative moment. Okay, the next one, the next way to calculate this is to use um, Varignon's theorem. Okay, that's the second way. What is Varignon's theorem? Well, remember the moment of the force about that point is equal to the sum of the components of the moments, uh, the sum of the moments of the components. So you break this guy up into, say it's x and y, x component and y component, x and y component, and then you calculate the moment of f1 about O, and you add it to the moment of f2 about O. Right? And that's what happens here. Uh, you can go into all the details. But the component F1 is 600 cos 40, okay, because that, that's 40, so that angle there is also 40. Okay, so that's 40, so 600 cos 40, 600 sine 40, and now you can see this is actually easier, for me at least, right? So F1, you draw the, uh, the line of action, and you can see that the moment arm is 4. Right, there's the line of action, there's 4. So, so 600 cos 40, which is 460 times 4, and it's a clockwise moment. And then F2 is, again, so it's easy. I know that I've got F2 equal to 386, and then the moment on is straightforward. I draw, I draw this, I extend this line of action, and I can see that that is my D, which is 2. Okay? And so it gives you the same. It gives you the same answer. 
Now, guys, I didn't actually mention this, uh, but I, I just want to go back. I think this is important because uh, you may look... Remember, this was Varignon's theorem from before. Let me just move that out the way. And in this specific case, we had a minus and a plus there. Please, I'm begging you, okay? I'm not on my knees, but I'm begging you. Don't memorize any of these kinds of equations. Just remember the concept and apply it from first principles. Okay? Because I've had students come to me and say, uh, I see a minus there and a plus there. Do I, is, you know, should I, do I need to remember that this is a minus? And, don't remember any. Just remember your name. Remember where you live. And remember Varignon's theorem is... Just remember what Varignon's theorem says. It says, I take the original moment, or force rather, and I break it up into its components, and then I just take this force on its own and calculate its moment, take that force, calculate its moment, and I add them up. And in this case, you can see they're both causing clockwise moments. So they're both in the same direction. Whereas, whereas this moment, whereas this force about that point, that the two components, this component caused a clockwise moment, and that force caused a counterclockwise moment. Do you see that they're different? So don't memorize it, just um, memorize the concept, and understand the concept. Okay, point number three. Okay, now we can use the principle of transmissibility together with Varignon's theorem. What do we mean by this? We can actually take that force, which was, by the way, broken up into its components, and we can, because of uh, the principle of transmissibility, because we're using uh, rigid body mechanics, we can apply that force at B, anywhere along the line of action. And then we apply it at B and break it up into its two components. And then the nice thing about this is that this F2 passes through the point of rotation. So F2, in this case, has no, comp has no moment. But F1 now has a moment. So uh, the moment uh, based on this one is equal to F1 times this total distance here. That total distance. Which is D1 plus that short distance. And you're going to have to make sure that you uh, get your geometry and trigonometry up to speed. It's probably better than mine. Uh, but that angle, let me just make sure. Okay, that angle there is 40. Which means that that angle is 40. Okay, so that angle there, that is 40. So if we know this length is 2, and we have that angle, then that opposite, remember, tan of theta is opposite over adjacent. So adjacent tan theta is opposite. So we're looking for this opposite length. We've got the adjacent length. So that's 2. Tan theta is opposite. So that length there is 2 tan theta. And so the total length is 4. That's 4 plus 2 tan 40 gives us our moment arm. We multiply that moment arm by F1 is 460 and we get the same value believe it or not now we can also take that force and by the principle of transmissibility put it over there now in this case f1 is eliminated and f2 remains because f1 the line of action passes through point o and f2 remains but now we have to calculate d2 okay so as you can see, the way they calculate D2 is saying 2 plus 4 cot 40. Now where does that come from? 
Well, um, if my tablet allows me to draw a straight line, okay, just imagine that that's a straight line, okay, and this is a right angle there. That length there is 2, based on that length. We've got 2, 2 plus that distance gives us d2. So we know that that is 2. And then we know that that angle is 40. Okay, because that angle is 40, that angle is 40. And uh, that angle is 40, okay? And we know the height here is what? It is 4. That's 4. That, that height is 4. So they're saying 2 plus 4 cot 40. So what is cot? Uh, cot of theta is adjacent over opposite. So cot of 40 is 4 divided by that length there. So 4, so cot of 40 is ad uh, adjacent. Is that right? Tan is opposite over adjacent. So cot is adjacent over opposite. Okay. So, exactly. So that'll be adjacent over 4. So we have 4 cot 40 is this distance here. That's where 4 cot 40 comes from. And then you've got 6.77. Multiply it by that and we get the same number. Okay, so can you see different ways of computing it? Number 1, you just compute it using the scalar method. Okay, the scalar. That means you calculate this D directly. Then another way is you use Varignon's theorem to break it up, which is always my preferred way, but it, there's many ways as you can see. And then the third and fourth method is to use Varignon's theorem and the principle of transmissibility to put it anywhere along the line of action. Okay, so the next one we will look at the uh, cross product.